Oh, yeah. Where's Ann? She's not here. And if she was, she wouldn't want to see you, Rand. No? <laughs> well, suppose we let her answer that. I'll wait for her. Now, there's no use hanging around, Jess. Ann knows, and I know, that you want to marry her so you can pay off your gambling debts. I wouldn't say that. Finished is my foreman, Brand. I'll pay you off, then I want you to clear out. take all of that. You'll take what's coming to you. And what's in the safe, too. So you're a thief as well as a gambler, eh? Why, you... <coughs> Pardon, good sir. Could you kindly direct me to the hamlet known as the Lone Jack? Well, I'm a stranger hereabouts, hunting a job. But I think uh, Lone Jack is about five miles south from here. Oh. <laughs> Thank you for your courtesy, sir. That's all right, stranger. Yeah. Oh, just a moment. Just a moment. Uh, in return for your kindness, allow me to offer you this bottle of curo. The renowned panacea of the medical world, good for all ills of the flesh. Thanks, old timer, but I'm just about as healthy as I can stand it. This curo is potent for man or beast. Perhaps your noble animal there may be suffering from an ailment of which you know nothing. <laughs> no, that horse is as healthy as I am. Yeah. Is that so, carrying around a big lump like you? I bet I've got curvature of the spine. <laughs> That's a darn good trick, Doc. Science, sir, not trickery, as my good friend here will assure you. Allow me to introduce Medico, my partner in this enterprise. Who is this big paloca, Doc? You told him my name. What's he hiding his for? <laughs> I'm Rayburn, wandering cowboy in search of a job. There you are, Medico. Yeah, that's what he says. Looks to me like a wandering bandit in search of a stagecoach to hold up. Look here, young man. If you're not more courteous, I'll throw you out here and leave you. <laughs> throw me out and you won't sell a bottle of Curo in a month. Hey, Tom, why don't you buy a bottle? <laughs> 
By Jake, I will, Doc. <laughs> Permit me, sir. I thank you. Now I'll show you one. I told you, Doc. I told you. I warned you he was a gunman. <laughs> Amazing precision, sir. I should not like to be your enemy. <laughs> Nor I yours, Doc. I bet your stuff is as deadly as mine. Uh, uh, nothing of the kind, sir. Hugo is the savior of mankind. Yeah, yeah. So long, Doc. So long, sir. <laughs> You were in Loan Jack. I thought I'd ride back with you, but you got a long start. I didn't need any company, Jeff. I suppose Dad told you he'd sent for another foreman. What do you mean? Well, I haven't seen your dad. Why should he want a new foreman? Dad will explain all that. Hold on, Ann. I thought you and I were going to get married someday. I wanted you. Oh, no, you didn't. You wanted the Gilbert Ranch. And you thought that marrying me was the easiest way to get it. Oh, now listen, Ann. You and your dad have got me all wrong. Why, my intentions were sincere. Father must have a visitor. Since when are you afraid of strangers? Not I, miss. I found him like this not three minutes ago. Don't move, stranger. Or I'll drill you. Dad! You got me all wrong, folks. I didn't do this job. Get over against the wall. Over there. And face it. shot fired. And you didn't do this job, eh? That shot was fired an hour ago on the road. I can prove that. You'll get a chance to prove it. Don't move. Ann, 
How much money was in the safe? Oh, I don't know. Several hundred dollars. And hold this gun on him while I search you. I didn't do it, Miss Gilbert. You'll find that I'm telling the truth. Shut up. Turn it on. And I suppose this money just crept into your pocket while you were looking around. Either that or it was just put in my pocket. Don't lie. You killed him. If you were to shoot him now, any court in the world would turn you loose. No. Telephone the sheriff, Jess. Sheriff's office, operator. And make it snappy. Keep your hands where they are. One and answer. Hello. Yeah. You, Sheriff. Hello. Sheriff talking. What's that, Hank Gilbert? Yes, Sheriff. We've got the man. Come on, running. Be there in ten minutes. What's up? Hank Gilbert's murdered. Come on. Take care of this money and bring me a rope. You can't get away with this thing. You put that money in my pocket and I expect you shot Gilbert. That'll sound fine when you tell it in court. It'll sound better when Gilbert tells it. He just moved. Gilbert. I didn't kill your father. I can't prove it if I'm locked up. If you take another step, I'll shoot. I don't believe it. I'm sorry, but I'll come back and explain. Shoot!
that's sure nice shooting. Glad he shot the tire instead of me. Well, you can just start changing it to show how grateful you are. Oh, Chuck, I'm always getting in for the hard work. Well, I don't know what we can do now. Well, I guess that's as close as we can make it. My boys haven't been able to find any clues. He's probably a long ways off by now. I'm not so sure of that. He told Ann Gilbert he was coming back. Did you learn anything? Not a thing. I stopped out at the Gilbert place and I saw Ann. She's got Miss Barnes to stay with her until she sells the place. I don't think Ann aims to sell. We mean to get married just as soon as it's decent after the death of her father. See you later. All right, Brad. That's a break for Jesse Brand, the old man kicking off. Gilbert didn't approve of Jesse. Yeah, but it's a tough break for Ann. Property will probably go over the card table, the same as Brand's did. Dr. Kiro? That's right. Listen, mister, if you're sick, you better let me prescribe for you, not him. I don't want his medicine. I want Doc himself. Where is he? Most likely working the righteous hereabouts. He'll probably be in sometime tonight. <coughs> Stick around. Maybe you'll see him. Nope, I'll be moving. I might meet up with him on the road. Much obliged. If he was, do you think he'd come walking right in among us? A couple of more drinks and you'll think you've collected the reward. <laughs> hmm. It might be me or a couple of other fellows. As a singer, I'm a novice. 
but as a professor of medicine, I have no peer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which one is the dummy? <laughs> come on, let's have that again. Come on. Oh, forget it. Come on. Come on. Gentlemen, I bow to the will of my public. You have a cup of tea. Thank you, Mrs. Barnes. That was very thoughtful of you. Oh, you may go to bed now. I won't want anything more. Mm. You better go, too. It doesn't do any good to sit here and think about... I'm going pretty soon. Good night. Good night, Miss Anne. What do you want? I told you I'd be back. May I come in? Won't you sit down? I must talk to you. I'm Tom Rayburn. This letter from your father came to me through an employment agency. It offers me a good job as foreman. Do I look as though I'd kill the man that offered it? There was the money in the safe. Not good enough. The man that killed your father had a stronger motive than that. What do you mean? The man you call Jess. What would he have to gain in the event of your father's death? But I saw him take the money from your pocket. Easy enough for a man that's clever with his fingers. Does this man by any chance play cards? Why, why yes, he plays. Quite a lot, I imagine. He could palm that money as easily as he palms a deck of cards. I had no reason to kill your father. What about this man, Jess? I will listen to what you have to say, Mr. Rayburn. Sit down, please. There was a single shot fired from your gun. That's right. And if I can find this man who saw me fire that shot, I can prove I was here only a minute before you came. <laughs> and now, gentlemen, P.U. From the bar. Gentlemen, how may you offer you a bottle of juice? Uh, That's uh, got such a grudge against that guy. He's done you a big favor. Left you clear a field to marry the girl and all of her money. I ain't so sure of that. He aims to make trouble. Said he'd be back. Sure, get him if he does. I'll get him myself. Oh, that's it, is it? Ah, oh, my friend. You're the man who so boldly fought the killer. I've been waiting to meet you. To offer you the benefits of Curo. Run along. I'm busy. Ah, oh, but you're not too busy to guard your health 
against the insidious inroads of disease. Not too busy to... I said I was busy. Um, <clears throat> On second thought, I'm afraid that Kuro would not be beneficent in your case. Uh, I thank you, gentlemen. <laughs> the lowdown on this thing, Brand. It's like I told you. Come on and have a drink. I'll tell you outside. Set him up. I'll have a little of the same, thank you. Again, I thank you. Who ordered that drink? Why, you did, Bran. You sure did. I heard you. Let's get out of here. Those are the facts, Miss Galbert. There's enough evidence to hang me, if it isn't believed. I believe you, but no one else will. Well, you shouldn't have come back here. I told you I'd come back and explain. Anyhow, no one had seen me close by except Bran. And this is the last place they'd expect to find me. I've got to go into Lone Jack and see if I can find that patent medicine man. You can't go into town. They have a description of you. I've seen that. Except for the clothes, it might be any big man. The clothes, yes. Wait. These are some things of my father's. You do believe in me, then? Do you think I'd let you wear Dad's things if, if I thought you had killed him? And you can be sure of this, too. I won't run away until the right man is caught. Good night. Good night. Somewhere outside. 
Our job's in line. What do you mean? He was talking to that quack doctor. Let's find out what he knows about this. What a bunch of boots we were. Right here in Austin. You, Doc. What do you know about that killer? Killer? Oh, uh, you mean the gentleman who just departed from here so hastily? Don't stall. Who is he? Where did you meet him? And when? Uh, the old crossroads. Five miles north, four days ago at about... Never mind the time. We're not interested. It isn't healthy to be seen talking to murderers around here. Do you think Curo is good for hemp fever? Uh, well, perhaps not. At any rate, I had made up my mind to depart from your charming city tomorrow morning. See that you do. And don't come back. Thank you. <clears throat> and uh, good evening, gentlemen. A little bourbon. Hey. I wouldn't let that fella get away if I was you. He isn't going to get away. Good morning, gentlemen. Is there someone ill in town that you sent for me at this early hour? Somebody's going to be mighty sick if you try any of your funny tricks. Start oh. your car and drive slow. Sir, there must be some mistake, I assure Are you. Are you I... going to move? Uh, uh, uh... Yes, sir, I was just going to.
the shack. Sit down. Thanks. I was just going to. Nice place you have around here. Now, what can I do for you, gentlemen? talking to in town. In town? In town? Oh, uh, Chicago, St. Paul, Minneapolis? In the saloon last night. Oh, in the saloon, huh? Let me think. Hmm? Rayburn. Mr. Rayburn, I believe. Tom Rayburn. That's an affidavit for you to sign. You'll find it impossible to be present at Rayburn's trial. Well, I could come back. I'm afraid not. Sign it. The time isn't quite correct. It was at least an hour later that I met this gentleman, because I looked at my watch. Sign it. Been here this morning. Not him, but no account. After a killing in this house, he lets us unprotected women stay alone while he grouses his town. What's the matter? Do you see something? Oh, no, I, I just remembered. I have to feed the horses since I've let the men go. Come here by daylight. Did you learn anything? Plenty. 
Brand got a hold of my witness and was trying to force him to sign an affidavit. What makes you so all fired sure that fellow's coming back here? He was here last night. When he came into the saloon, he was wearing Gilbert's clothes. Hmm. You think he's convinced the girl? That's what I aim to find out. If I'm not back here shortly, come and look for me. Stay hidden. I'll get you something to eat. If Matthews comes, I'll bring him here. It's just Brand. That's too bad. I'm not quite ready for a showdown. Wait. He can't know that you're here. I'll see if I can get rid of him. Good morning, Ann. Sorry I'm late. That killer was in town last night. Did you know that? It doesn't matter about your being late. I'm letting the men go. Come inside and get your money. Listen, Ann, you shouldn't sell the ranch. I thought that you and I... And I told you that was all over and done. Maybe he'd come back here. It doesn't seem likely that he would. Why not? He was after that money. He'd have to be pretty cold-blooded, wouldn't he? Took him back to the room where he'd shot a helpless old man. your father's hat. I found it in the other room and I... I'll look at it later, Mrs. Barnes. I'm, I'm busy just now. Yes, ma'am. The man who kills your father. Oh, I... Don't lie to me. He's been here, given you some cock and bull story, made you believe he was innocent. Where is he? Don't be a fool, Jeff. He's not in this house. Not in the house, huh? What were you doing down at the barn a few minutes ago? Do I have to explain all my actions to you? You can do your explaining after I've smoked him out into the open. Hello, Rand. Thanks for the hat. I wondered where I dropped it. You're not going anywhere, are you? Keep your hand away from that gun, though. You might get hurt. Sit down. Sit down, Miss Gilbert. Glad you dropped in, Brand. I'm expecting a man here shortly who wants to tell Miss Gilbert just where I was at the time her father was shot. Meanwhile, you might tell us where you were about that time. I was in town. Anne knows that. I know you said you were in town. You met me on the road within a quarter of a mile from here. What is this, a frame-up? You know we caught this man. Here, red-handed. Maybe we'd better... Quack doctor just drove up. Maybe we'd better go over and give it a look.
Captain Farrell for this murderer. You can't will his killing on me. I beg pardon. I trust I'm not interrupting. Uh, Come in, Doc. Uh, thank you. This is Miss Gelbert, Matthews. I guess you've seen Brand before. Uh, yes, uh, I've had the pleasure. I want you to tell these folks when and where you first met me and how there happened to be a shot fired from my gun. I first uh, had the pleasure of meeting this young man uh, about two o'clock in the afternoon, four days ago. Would you, uh, could you, w would you mind uh, removing that gentleman's gun before I proceed? <sighs> I thank you. Now, as I was saying, it. Now, we, it would have uh, taken him at least half hour to reach this place. Well, who's to say what time he got here? Are you going to take the word of this peddling quack against mine? If Hank Gilbert could only speak. I am going to speak, Brand. Your testimony is good enough for me, Doc. If you'll repeat all that in court, I'm willing to call the sheriff and risk anything Brand may say. How about what I will say? She has to tell what she saw. You won't testify in court, Brand. You don't dare. Who, who said that? You killed me, Brand. Get away from me, brother. What happened to it? You said between me and Anne. Nice work, Doc. That'll do. You tricked me. Sit down, Brand. Sit down. Better call the sheriff, Miss Gilbert. Operator! Operator! Get me the sheriff's office. Come on, sheriff! This is... We aren't going to need the sheriff for this party. Take him outside. Take the shortcut to town.
Calm down, man. Keep your hands clear of the gun. the gun, Pete. Well, looks like you got our job done for us before we got here, stranger. Well, there's a lot of them. I'm glad you came along. I'm very grateful to you. That's all right, miss. I, I was only saving my own neck. Oh, about that job Dad offered you. Well, it's still open. Well, I sure would like to take it on. A bottle of funeral will bring the gentleman around, Sheriff. Ah. 